So, welcome everybody. If you all want to gather round and make sure you can hear me. Okay, so welcome down to the pit lane here um, at the Rome e -Pri. We're all at ja Panasonic Jaguar Racing. We are so excited to be here. This has been one of the events all season that everybody has said they're very excited to come. Two reasons, obviously we're in Rome. Uh, you know, it's, Italy has a long history of passion for motorsport, but also it's historical. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's an incredibly beautiful place to be. It's where modern technology is meeting the ancient world. So I'm going to assume you know very little about Formula E. So I'll start at the beginning. The first thing to notice is two cars per driver. This is unique. No other series has anything like this. This is because when Formula E began five years ago, the, the battery was not capable of doing a, the full race distance. Even now, the battery is still not capable, this battery is still not capable of doing half of the race distance, which is why you will hear people talking about regen. Regen is absolutely critical. So the battery itself would do about 40, 45% of a race distance you therefore must regenerate energy to finish 50%. Regen is only available to the drivers when we get to about 80% state of charge. And then when they get to about 25% state of charge, regen finishes, you then just use battery. So in the window between about 25 and 80%, they can regenerate power. Now on a circuit like this, where we've got a lot of elevation and a lot of drop, obviously when they're driving up the hill, it uses much more power. When they're driving down the hill they have more of an opportunity to regen but this is the same for everybody so we're all facing the same challenges now last year jaguar decided to enter formula e the main reason for this was because it was a real life test bed for the technology the electric technology that is going into our actual road program so rather than this being a rather tenuous link between a racing program and a, and a road car program, what we're learning here in Formula E is directly relevant. I think Formula E is one of the most exciting places to be anywhere in motor racing at the moment because we are pushing the boundaries. Every time we go out, we learn more about electrification, how batteries operate, electric powertrains every single time. If you think of the internal combustion engine, it's been around for 100 years. We're only ever talking about marginal gains when cars go out. Most of the time, we're even just talking about aerodynamics and suspension. We're not actually talking about engine performance. So here, we're looking at performance and we are making huge gains in our understanding. So obviously, this is electric. The cars are the same all the way down the pit lane. The big difference is from the roll hoop back. So everybody gets the same car, the battery is standard, but from the battery, the motor, the inverter, um, the gearbox, and the rear suspension is open for the teams. Now again, this is another way why Formula E is so attractive to manufacturers, why we have more manufacturers in Formula E than anything else, because this is the relevant bit to the road cars, aerodynamics, making cars go faster through these marginal gains doesn't really reflect on our ro on road cars so this is where we as a manufacturer are, are learning so it's our motors our inverters and our gearbox this is therefore the sensitive bit and every team has a different solution and of course nobody knows what the right answer is we just try our best so last year was our first year. It was a very difficult year for us. We came into a championship that was established. Many teams, you know, they'd been racing for two years. They knew most of the circuits. They understood the technology. We were new last year. We came in late, so we knew we didn't have a very fast setup. We knew our, our, batch, our powertrain was safe and reliable, but it wasn't going to be the quickest. There were many compromises. We immediately started working on our car for this season. We made 200 changes. This has now meant we are much quicker. We're now fighting for podiums. We're looking forward to podiums and we hope to be winning races before too long. 
So out of those 200 changes that we made to the car last year, these are all about weight and efficiency. Because if I told you that the battery, each battery in each car is 28 kilowatt hours of power, this is 56 kilowatt hours for the whole race. And if I told you that 56 kilowatts, if you convert that into a petrol equivalent, is 5.77 litres of gas. So for the entire race, you are looking at the cars using 5.77 litres. So when we're talking about efficiency, we are really talking about huge efficiency. So when we're looking at a gain of 10% of efficiency, this is obviously very important because again, this translates into the road cars, into having extended range. And when we're looking at uh, electric, electric road cars, this is of course the big thing that everybody needs to address, extending their range. So the cars are standard, they're 880 kilograms uh, car and driver. Um, tires are unique to Formula E as well because they're grooved. This is also because we're on street circuits but also because Michelin, who are tasked with um, making the tyre, they're also looking at direct relations between road tyres. It's easy to throw money at a problem and to create 15 different tyre compounds to go quick, but actually Michelin want to sell more road tyres as well. They're, they're on this, you know, we all want to learn how we can improve our product for our sales. So again, Michelin have created a road tyre that can do all of the racing on all of the circuits in all of the weathers. We have one, we have one, one tyre and one tyre only. So the big thing with Formula E, it's a time thing because everything is condensed into one day. It's very important to keep to time, keep to time. So we have our session, we have non-quali one, non-quali two. But it's now very important because we have got qualifying at 12 o'clock in 35 minutes and this is a live pit. The mechanics are now getting the cars ready for that session. We have no choice, you must go out. The qualifying sessions run in batches, so you have five cars per batch, they run for five minutes. They get an out lap, a 180 kilowatt lap and then a 200 kilowatt lap. That's it. So again, very important, no mistakes, keep it clean, but the pressure is very tight on the drivers. Has anyone got any questions? I'm aware I just talk and I give you lots of information, so any questions? The batteries are the same in all cars? All the same. And so from what manufacturer? Or one manufacturer. So currently Williams are the battery provider for the whole series. Because Williams are our technical partner, they are no longer providing the batteries next year. It's going to be McLaren or uh, Advanced McLaren. Yeah. So. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> great. We're fine. Any other questions? I hope you enjoy the race. Um, I, I got a question about Waymo and the deal with Google. Yes. Uh, traditionally, the transfer of technology is from those cars to the regular car. Yes. Is it possible sometimes, back in the future, that there will be races without any driver, any pilot? Well, here only at, with IA. Yeah. Here at Formula E, we have uh, something called Robo Race. Okay. Where again, they are trialing the technology. So the car is uh, driving around the track. It's they, ha they have a driver sometimes, but they have also run the car without the driver. Okay. Not full speed yet, yeah. but they are, again, they're trying. Okay. This, the, the, the exciting thing about this environment is that we don't know where the boundaries are yet. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the end point is. We know we are, you know, everything is open to possibility. Now, autonomous racing may not ever come of anything, but the technology that comes from Should autonomous know, racing yeah. May well. Maybe. So it's With it's full trajectory and exactly. the okay. Yeah. The pilot won't be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank I'm sorry. Much. I believe you have to go. Would you like your microphone back? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Sorry, sir. Can I just grab your passport? Yeah.